Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. And peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now, we are going to get right back into I Am Harriet. Uh, currently right now, we're on chapter number two. And this is take two of chapter number two entitled Runaway. So without further ado, it reads as such. Now, this railroad didn't have tracks or trains. The Underground Railroad was a super secret network of people who helped slaves trying to escape to freedom. The name came from an incident with the escaped slave named Tice Davids. While running away from Kentucky, he swam across the Ohio River. His master chasing him was mystified that Tice seemed to disappear when he got to the other side. And this is a picture right there. Let's see the picture. All right. Let us continue on. He said Tice had found some sort of an underground railroad. The real underground railroad was comprised of thousands of white and black people known as conductors who were against slavery. They provided the stations, safe places for runaways, slaves to hide. These could be attics or hidden crawl spaces under floors or behind shelves. Each conductor would offer the name of the next conductor. And here is an example of, of like in an attic or behind the shelves of a runaway slave hiding. Now, the runaways known as packages and traveled at night usually by foot, but sometimes by wagon or boat. Every step on the routes that crisscrossed the country from Mexican border to Canada was scary because slave hunters were constantly on the lookout for escaped slaves. Conductors also faced uh, severe consequences if they were caught helping fugitives. White people could be given big fines or put in jail. But for blacks, the punishment could be much, much worse. They could be put to death. The people who made up the railroad, which carried thousands to freedom, were incredibly brave. Those conductors put aside their personal safety to follow their consciousness. Harriet had found her people. The first person Harriet stayed with on her journey was a white woman who lived not too far from the plantation. A white woman? Harriet must have been startled when the door opened to reveal a white face on the other side. White people had only hurt her. Why would this woman help her? Hmm. And here is a picture right there. Okay. But Harriet put her faith and life in the hands of this complete stranger and walked through the door. The following night, the woman gave Harriet the name of her next conductor. And a small fugitive was on her way. She traveled by night through the swamps and forests, surviving on scrap food or plants she knew were edible. The fear of running into a slave hunter or one of the their vicious dogs fueled Harriet through her hunger and exhaustion. She never knew what was coming next. On one leg of her journey, she hid in a wagon under goods while it drove her to the next station. Mostly, though, 
she was alone. Looking up at her big, bright North Star. And moving forward. And here is a picture of the star right there. Secret codes. It was hard for slaves to pass along secret information to one another, often under the watchful eye of, the, of an overseer. They had little privacy. For the most part, they didn't know how to read or write. So passing notes was impossible. How did slaves plan to escape or pass along warnings without being found out? Hmm? Here are a few ways they created secret codes. I'm going to show you the picture. Can you see it? There you go. Quilts. <laughs> These blankets which would hang from windows without drawing attention carried codes that gave encouragement and warnings to fugitives through their patterns. For example, a zigzag pattern called the drunkard's path was a reminder not to travel in a straight line so that hunters would get confused. Songs. Working in the same way as the quilts, songs had hidden meanings Follow the Drinking Gourd was a song that referred to the Big Dipper, which is used to find the North Star, the main guide for slaves trying to go north. And here is another picture right there. About a hundred miles after she began, Harriet finally crossed into Pennsylvania, a free state. I felt like I was in heaven, she said, about her first taste of freedom. Harriet kept going until she found herself in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, let freedom ring. And here's a picture of the bell right there there y'all. Philadelphia at that time was the fourth largest city in the world and had 20,000 African Americans who were for the most part free residents. Life in Philadelphia couldn't have been more different than life on the plantation. First of all, Harriet could go where she wanted without asking for anyone's permission when she wasn't working as a maid or a cook. She liked to visit local parks or black-owned shops. It was amazing to live in a place where African Americans had their own businesses, went to schools, and attended their own churches. Philadelphia was remarkable. But Harriet missed her family. Freedom wasn't as sweet when she knew they were still enslaved back home. While Harriet worked hard and diligently saved her money, she vowed to rescue her family. She didn't know how she'd do it. But when Harriet got something into her mind, there was no getting it out. And I am going to end take two right there here on Poem Praise 2. So there is another picture right there. And stay tuned for take number three of chapter two. But until then, I certainly want for you to be well, take care, and be blessed. It be at thy will. I will speak with you soon here on Poem Praise 2. So until next time, later y'all.